Hey there, this is Rick. I hope you're having a great day. In this video, I'm going to be introducing you to the resin printing station. This is just a little tag on introduction uh, to the video footage you're about to watch. I actually filmed all of this about a week ago uh, and actually ended up with uh, this little model, which you will uh, see take shape in uh, the video. Uh, originally it was going to be tagged on to the end of another video but it, it didn't work out that way so uh, this is me saying enjoy the footage. This was filmed about a week ago. There's a bit of chopping and changing going on all the way through it but I'm sure you'll get the gist of it anyway. So uh, here comes the footage. Enjoy. Okay so this is the resin printing station and uh, Let's just take this off. Uh, basically, I've got two resin printers. I've got a, uh, an Elegoo Saturn and an Elegoo Mars. And uh, one's obviously a lot smaller than the other. I started off with the Mars, discovered how good resin printing was and went for the bigger model, which is the Saturn. And I'm actually about to use it. This is the, the base. I've just been um, curing it. And this is a, a curing station and uh, it, it has ultraviolet light and a little turntable and it, it cures because um, resin cures in ultraviolet light and for some reason it's done this really weird cutout thing this is actually supposed to be round all the way around so the print messed up so it, it, I think it was something to do with the supports now I've re-established the the supports on the print and I'm going to do another version of this but I'm going to do it in white and I'm going to do that now and I can show you how the printer works now, there's no denying it, resin printing is a messy business. I've just realized I've got a microphone on there. Let me just take the mic off and put it on the lapel here. Uh, so I've got myself a white jacket and uh, this is just to stop any resin splashes. Some people think this is over the top, but I just kind of, I've been, I've had resin splashed on my clothes before and it's smelly stuff. You don't really want to be getting involved with it. So by putting on these protective ovals um, if I do get any splashes on me it doesn't mean I've got to change and wash all my clothes again so always wearing goggles and you've got to do gloves as well the thing with resin printing is the resin before it's cured is actually quite toxic so you don't really want to get involved with it you don't want to physically come into contact with it uh, and I get through so many of these gloves it's ridiculous but Let's turn on the Saturn and I'll bring you over and you can see what's what. So this is the Saturn resin printer. It's a very, very simple principle how it works. Actually, it's kind of genius. Whoever invented this, it's really good. So you have, let me just take these out. You have a, a tray or a vat with something on the bottom called a FEP. Don't ask me what FET means. It obviously is probably an acronym for something, but I don't know what. Um, and in there sits your resin. Now, on the top here, you've got yourself a little TV screen. I'm not sure if you'll see this. Uh, I'll just put it on for two seconds. <clears throat> uh, so you should see a little thing come on. I'm not gonna look at it. <coughs> so it's gonna come up with this pattern here. There we go. See, I'm not looking at that because that's ultraviolet light and it's not good for you. So. The principle is really simple. You fill this with resin and what happens is uh, the TV screen underneath shines through and solidifies a layer of resin. And that resin sticks to this plate. So this plate goes down into the vat, the light comes on in whatever pattern you demand and then uh, that pattern of resin will stick to the plate. And what happens, it pulls off and then it goes back down again, but not quite as high, not quite as low. And then it does the next layer and then it pulls off and then it goes back down again, does the next layer. And eventually it builds up into uh, something like this. Now, obviously that isn't gonna fit on the plate. So what you do is you, uh, you sit it at an angle on the plate and then you have these supports, uh, which look a little bit like scaffolding, sort of like this, and they attach to the plate and then to the object and eventually you end up with uh, the object that you want and you just have to pull off all the support. Sorry that was a very <laughs> long-winded description of 
how a uh, resin printer works. Anyway, let's get on. So I'm going to print this in, actually, I'm going to do it in gray. I need to use up this gray. I've had this gray for quite a while. It's generally only good for sort of a year. So I want to get this used up while it's still fresh. I think, yeah, I haven't got enough white there, so I'd have to open a new white. So yeah, we'll go with the, so what I'm using here is ABS like uh, photopolymer resin. Let's just fill up the vat with the gray. So there we go, up to the max line. And then all we've got to do, let me zoom in. So all we've got to do is find, uh, if I go to Mononoke Diorama, and then base only, uh, there we go. And then all I've got to do, oh, hello, what happened to my light? For some reason my lights aren't working. So, all I've got to do is hit start, and then you'll see the head come down. Takes a little while. I'll just speed the video up. That's not me doing the lights. There we go, it's going into the, the resin. It, it'll stop on the bottom. And then, Hopefully you can see that's the pattern. It's now printing on the base of the plate. That's actually the base uh, for all the supports. And that'll do that for about 40 seconds. And then the head will lift up and then it will do the next layer. There we go. So it's just lifted up a little. And it's just going back down again and then it will do the next layer. There we go. And that's basically going to keep going for the next 10 hours, is that? Uh, that's, I just basically need to leave that now. So I put this lid on and leave that to its own devices and uh, I'll come back in 10 hours or so. And that hopefully will be a successful print and it'll be a new one of these in grey. Right, this base has been printing overnight. So I just thought I'd show you the uh, the cleaning process. Um, it looks like it's printed successfully, but uh, let me bring you in and uh, we can have a look and see what's what. Okay. Yeah, looking good. Um, there is a lot of uh, excess resin left on the top of the build plate there. So what I'm gonna do, rather than mess up my um, isopropyl alcohol in there uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash off the majority of that in this little separate container it just makes life a little bit easier and it makes the uh, the washing solution uh, last a bit longer so you wash the prints in isopropyl alcohol and uh, let's uh, just take that off just give it a little tip see if there's any last little drips going to come off of it I think we're okay. It feels pretty lightweight, so I know that's not like full of resin. It has got some little uh, drain holes in it because it's hollow inside. So let's just pop that in there. And what I normally do is just wash off the top of the plate because there's quite a bit of resin on there that I don't really want going into the cleaning solution. Now you might have noticed this is white. Um, when I set up yesterday, uh, well, when you saw me setting up yesterday, uh, I was using the grey, but unfortunately the, the grey uh, print failed and uh, it seemed to uh, miss half of, the, uh, half of the print. And uh, I think that may be because that grey resin might be getting old. Um, I'm not sure. I should do a test print with it again at some point, but it does mean changing the vat over. So it's quite a, uh, a bit of faffing around. So I'll, I'll worry about that another day. But in the end, I opened a bottle of brand new white resin and uh, had another go and it looks like it's printed. Oops, this stuff goes everywhere. Which is why it's a little bit of a messy job. So this is a wash and cure station. It's really cool. You can wash your print off and then you can cure it in ultraviolet light. And uh, let me just 
give you a demo of how it works. So basically you've got a tub here. Uh, this is full of isopropyl alcohol. Um, there's like uh, 700 millilitres in there. And uh, now this is slightly cleaner. You can see the, the isopropyl alcohol just coming out of the drain holes here. So I'm just gonna literally try to avoid the drips. Drop that straight into there. There's like a little, a little basket in there that uh, holds everything in place. And there's a little impeller motor on the bottom. You can hear it uh, filling up inside. So let's switch it on. And uh, we're on the wash setting, hopefully, yeah. And I'm just gonna wash that for about, about eight, eight minutes. Just hit that. You can see the impeller start up and that'll create like a little vortex inside the chamber here. And that'll, uh, over the next few minutes, just clean off any uh, resin residue. Um, and then we can think about getting it off the build plate. So you can see the, the vortex there and that's just it's quite a powerful vortex actually and every two minutes it changes direction so it's quite a cool little machine this this is the uh, any cubic wash and cure plus I've also got a smaller version this is the any cubic uh, just wash and cure uh, 2.0 and it's exactly the same thing and it was originally designed for the uh, the Eligu Mars because obviously you've got the size um, thing here but obviously when you step up to the Saturn um, you're going to need a bigger wash and cure station. So basically this wash and cure plus is just a grown up or a bigger version um, of this. There you go, it's just slowing down and then it'll go the other way. So the lights have decided they want to work in the shed now. Basically, I've got, um, I've got two different light systems. I've got one that runs on the mains, which is this main fluorescent light here, but I've also got these little LED lights here and here, and there's, there's a few more, but they put quite a bit of pressure on the, uh, the battery. But these are solar powered. They've got a little tiny solar panel up on the roof of the shed, and then I've got a little um, mobility scooter battery just tucked away up in the corner here. Um, and then that comes through to little solar charge controllers. It's a nice sunny day today so the uh, the lights are working well but uh, I have noticed these these lights they've got quite a few bulbs in them and they really uh, they, they really drain the battery quite quickly um, although it's not a massive battery but uh, they, they've tied me over so far but obviously in the winter it might be a different issue. Um, I also have some potential issues in the winter with the temperature uh, the resin printing has to take place at sort of about no no cooler than about 60 degrees um, so you know that's kind of room temperature so uh, in the cold I'm gonna have to build some sort of an enclosure to enclose these things and have some sort of heater in it but that'll be a future project um, so uh, watch this space okay that's had a, a few minutes to wash off and I'm just gonna Take that off the plate and then give it another wash. There we go, that's just about drained. So to take it off the plate, what I use is a scraper with one edge that's been sharpened. And uh, it's quite an efficient way of getting this off the plate. There we go, job done. And um, yeah, that's perfect, look at that. That has printed out absolutely perfectly and you can see the the kind of scaffolding arrangement you have for supports these supports are much much easier to take off and i'll show you that in a moment i'm just going to pop this back in the washer and i'm just going to give that another couple of minutes yeah that's perfect that's come out properly this time so that's exactly it. under the last one it had that weird sort of cut out there didn't it so I'll show you how easy it is to get the supports off of this. Okay, I tend to do this over the bin, it's just easier. Um, you literally, you just tear them off. Um, like I say, it's so much easier 
than doing this uh, on a FTP printer, which is the, like that printer I got upstairs. Although you do tend to pierce your gloves always when you when you do this. Um, but there we go, job done. So you can see a little bit of roughness. Hopefully you can see that. There's little little tiny little pips uh, where they attach. I can just go over that with a file or a piece of sandpaper and I'll take care of it. So it's one of the, the tricks is when you set up the supports for this is to try to put the supports on the non-visible side so that the, the visible side is generally untouched by the supports. Otherwise, I mean, I've had to have some supports there and you can see, hopefully you can see some little pips all the way around and they just need to be sanded out. Um, but it's not, a, it's not a massive issue. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's the base for that model and it's absolutely perfect. Very happy with that. So that's not quite ready yet. That's got to be baked off. That's got to be cured uh, in ultraviolet light. And I shall do that now. And I can do that in the, the same uh, wash and cure machine here. So I've got to pop the lid back on the IPA, otherwise it'll evaporate really quickly. And we'll just pop that off. And um, what I'm going to do is put this, this little reflective platform and turntable onto the base like so and then you put your piece that's nicely dried now a little bit wet inside can't really do a lot about that um, but that's it's just ice IPA inside so what I'm going to do is pop that down there and pop the lid on oh yeah I'm going to tilt the ultraviolet lights downwards so they're coming in from above as well pop the lid on and then we're going to hit cure and I'm just going to put that in there for, I don't know, 40 minutes. And that's it. The ultraviolet lights come on and that'll sit there quite happily turning around on that turntable and it'll finish in 40 minutes time. And then it's pretty much ready to sand and paint. Okay, so this is dirty resin being exposed to sunlight and what happens is almost straight away you can see the resin components within the um, within the IPA are actually immediately solidifying or turning to this uh, this gunk which you then later bake off um, it's basically turning into plastic so it's really it's really quite cool it's, it's so rare that we get direct sunlight um, but yeah if you want to clean the IPA what you do is you just put it out in the sunshine uh, and then the ultraviolet light will immediately turn all of the suspended resin that's in the IPA uh, to this white gunge and all, all you've got to do is, is you put that white gunge on a, a paper plate and then leave it out in the sunshine and it just goes hard but I've never seen it I've never seen it curing that quickly. That's quite amazing. So what, what I tend to do is also put the dirty resin in um, like an old Coke bottle. Um, and again, it just it cures all of the, um, the suspended resin. As soon as it hits the ultraviolet light of the sun, uh, it solidifies but it keeps casting shadow on the rest of it, so you have to keep agitating it. But eventually, you'll end up with this white, gungy stuff and clear liquid. It's really quite clever. So, here we have that finished um, base for the model I'm about to show you. Haven't sanded it down yet, and it also got a little bit of a suntan. You can see it's got, got a kind of a cream colour. And that's because the ultraviolet light has given it a, a bit of a suntan. Um, and that's what resin does. Um, it, you know, you can start off with uh, white resin, but if you um, bake it for too long, um, then it'll actually start to discolour it. It doesn't matter with this because it's going to be painted. But if you're doing something where you need the, the thing you're 
curing to be white then what you need to do is cure it for less time and then usually get some ultraviolet protective uh, coating on it uh, as soon as possible and then that prevents any further uh, degradation in the in the whiteness so um, this is uh, let's put this on a little lazy Susan uh, this is actually a, a model uh, that I've printed obviously it's got to be um, uh, painted but uh, this is the finished model I've, ju I've just got a few other parts I've got to print for it um, but this is from a Studio Ghibli movie um, called Princess Mononoke. Uh, it's one of the Studio Ghibli classic anime films and this is San from uh, Princess Mononoke. It's a really cool little model um, and hopefully it should look really good when it's painted up. Obviously that's a little bit... Let's see if I can get some more detail going on. Here we go, I've turned the light out there. So it's a really highly detailed model and uh, this was all printed out on the Saturn and uh, at some point in the near future I'm going to attempt painting this uh, so it could look really good or not depending on what my painting skills are like so that's it for this video that was just a, a introduction to the uh, the SLA printing station or the resin printing station hopefully it gives you at least some idea of what resin printing is all about I'm sure I'll do other videos on it at uh, some point in the near future but I've got plenty of other videos that I want to make uh, with regard to this whole new uh, builders and makers sort of direction that I'm now taking the channel. So uh, anyway do feel free to leave your comments below, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Until then take care.